Hello everyone, welcome to Motor on Beep Beep and today it's a bit of a fiasco because we've come to film the final resting place of uh, Eddie Waring and that was a crap interpretation, I know it was. I can't, I can't do Ulkington Rovers and all that stuff like Mikey Howard used to do but uh, <coughs> he was famous wasn't he for, uh, for his northern accent. Um, but we wanted to fly the drone, me and, me and Richard, but unfortunately we're so close to Leeds and Bradford it's not going to have it. It just won't let us do it. But anyway, let's get off and find our Eddie Waring. So we're going to head over now and find our Eddie, uh, as he was affectionately known, Uncle Eddie. That's because of his uh, his northern accent. A lot of people did say that he was exaggerated and it was like a stereotype. And later on in his career, he actually got a uh, petition against him. And the BBC wanted to sack poor Eddie. They said he was a, he was a, not a good example to the association, but luckily all that went by the by, and he stayed. The BBC kept him on, so we're going in now. Let's find Eddie Wary. <laughs> was born on the twenty first of February, two nineteen ten, in Dewsbury, and. Uh, like I said, he did get berated a little bit later on in his career because of his, his accent. He used to say things like um, Hulkingston Rovers rather than Bull Kingston Rovers. And so people took the mickey a bit basically. But of course, what I mainly remember him from, I think a lot of people do, is it's a knockout with Eddie Waring. Yeah, so he's mostly known for it's a knockout, uh, which was at Stuart Hall and Eddie Waring. So we're going to go that way now. It's not a very big place if you have a pan round. Cameraman, it's, we're going to start zigzagging across there and then we'll find Eddie. He's got to be here somewhere. We haven't actually seen a picture of the grave, so, you know, sometimes that makes it easier. But luckily, it's a very small area. So we're off now. And this is Richard, the, the cameraman, who's uh, behind yeah. me, the talented man. And he can do impersonations of Eddie Waring. Are you all right, Eddie? <laughs> <laughs> he was going to do it but his teeth would fall out he said <laughs> sorry about that right ok so let's go find Eddie <coughs> try not to catch me ball patch <laughs> yeah I did take some laughter Waring was never a noted rugby league player. He was more proficient at association football and had trials with Nottingham Forest and Barnsley. He began work as a typewriter salesman in his hometown of Dewsbury, but gave that up for a career by joining the local newspaper to report on rugby league matches. During the Second World War, Waring managed Dewsbury RLFC as he was exempt from the armed services with an ear condition. Recruiting men from the nearby military camp, he led the club to the second Challenge Cup victory in 1943. Waring travelled on HMS Indomitable with the Great British International Rugby Team on the first post-war tour of Australia. Returning home via United States, he met Bob Hope, who alerted him to the success of television and sport. This is believed to have convinced him that television will be crucial for rugby league long-term success. In the UK, he pushed this case harder with the BBC, having written to them as far back as 1931. After several rejections, he was given a chance to broadcast when the BBC began to cover the sport. Waring's commentary polarised over the next few decades. For some viewers, he would be Uncle Eddie, the warm, friendly voice of the North. But others believed his voice was simply a reinforced stereotype. During the 1960s, his eccentric mode of speech, Hull Kingston Rovers was pronounced Hulkington Stam Rovers, and his northern accent began to be widely impersonated, largely by Mikey Harwood. Many of his lines became catchphrases in the game, including It's an up and under, a rugby tactic consisting of kicking the ball in high arc while the rest of the team rushed forward to the landing point, hoping to gain possession and field position, and... He's going for an early bath when the player was sent off the field for a serious foul. Waring branched out 
appearing first as a referee on the television series It's the Knockout and as the UK representative of the international umpiring team for the European version of the show, Jews Sands Frontiers. He also appeared in TV programmes like Mark and Wise and The Goodies. The split in opinion regarding his contribution to the game, plus illness, led to a decline in Waring's popularity. A petition was organised by some of the hardcore supporters asking the BBC to remove him from commentary as he was perceived to betray a poor image of the game and its northern roots. The BBC stuck with him as their main commentator, although in the late 1970s they also brought in the former great back halfback Alex Murphy to work alongside him. Waring's overall health declined very quickly after his retirement from the commentary box. He was diagnosed with dementia and died at the High Royd Hospital in Menston, West Yorkshire in 1986. I'm sure he used to say, it's an up and over. Did he not? No? No, I don't think so. I've been deflated there, he didn't say these things. Um, but he used to go, Aah. then he'd go, ah, whatever, what was it? Warrington Rovers? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? I think so. It's something like that. Anyway, so we're here now, we're going to have a look at the grave. And we're going to be slightly more formal, because Eddie, we do respect you, my friend. You're a very famous uh, commentator. He was, he was um, in the world of rugby, um, not the biggest player, but very good in the commentary stakes. In memory of Edward Marsden Waring, MBE, Eddie. 21st of 2nd, 1910, to the 28th of the 10th, 1986. Best beloved husband of Mary and loving father of Tony and Mary Waring. 19th of the 5th, 1919, to the 8th of the 12th, 1989. Devoted wife of Eddie. A much loved mother of Tony. Rest peacefully. So there we are. I didn't realise it was that far back in time. I mean I remember him from uh, It's a Knockout mostly. Not being a smart, sporting buff but he was good. He was good with Stuart Hall. They made a good team. Stuart Hall used to giggle and laugh at him along with all the participants but uh, yeah very good. So We've got there, we didn't have to search much and we didn't have to use our cameraman Richard over there today but he did a very good job on the camera and his red dot is working fine. I can see it now. <laughs> okay folks, anyway, thank you for watching and uh, I hope all the Eddie Waring fans and rugby fans enjoyed this. It's very close to um, Leeds and Bradford Airport, it's just over there. That's why we couldn't film with the drone because you know, you, you, you're so close to shoot you if you tried so we had to leave that out but never mind I'll give you a quick pan round before we go look this is the graveyard so we can see where he is quite a nice little place isn't it right at the top of Yeadon near Leeds and Bradford Airport so thank you for watching everyone take care don't forget to subscribe and ding that bell for future notifications thumbs up and a comment will be lovely thank you everyone see ya take care